welcome to Watchtower History. We've been tracing the evolution of Watchtower's modern doctrines through the early trumpet blast and message conventions. From Cedar Point's Advertise, 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 to the second convention's Sheep and Goats Doctrine, which was a reaction to and interpretation of Rutherford's imprisonment. To the third convention's message, Civilization is Doomed, that pushed Watchtower doctrine to new judgmental levels. And now, to Watchtower's Message of Hope and the 1925 failure. Here in the Watchtower History Channel, we've been going through several of the trumpet blast conventions. We looked at the Cedar Point Convention. Uh, we looked at the sheep and goats discussion at the second trumpet blast. Uh, the third one was the indictments, accusations, and prohibition from the Columbus, Ohio Convention. And now we want to take a look at the fourth trumpet blast, Watchtower's message of hope. So right now we're at the fourth trumpet blast and it's the 1925 Indianapolis, Indiana convention that they are claiming was the fourth trumpet blast of revelation. Just like a lot of these other ones, we can see in the enterprise that a lot of these conventions were advertised there and they actually give detailed descriptions of the talks that were given there, what was said, uh, different activities that happened. And so because we have this microfilm record from the air, the enterprise, we're able to get more insight into these conventions than we might previously had had if we only had the watchtower in the golden ages of the time period. So this, or, or else it would be just one sided. <laughs> <laughs> so here now is a, a contradicting or confirmation opinions of both either way you could take it. So the, this 1925 convention was in Indianapolis. And the Enterprise gives us two issues where they give a lot of detail about the lectures that were given there. And two entire issues that are devoted to this message and the message of hope. Here's a couple photographs from the convention of those who were giving the talks there. And notice it says they were prominent Bible students at this convention. I'm going to say something about this one. Um, I remember my grandmother with that. And even, you know, down the road, there was always a mention of prominent ones in the congregation, prominent ones. While it's almost as if while they're discrediting that and that you shouldn't put anyone on a pedestal, they want you to know that there are prominent ones. And usually the prominent ones are the ones putting the most hours and doing the most stuff and more involved. So in one breath, they don't want them to be prominent yet. The other breath, they want to make them prominent to make everybody else follow and, and, and obey and become prominent themselves. I have always thought that that hilarious in, in reasoning back, standing back and looking at that. Well, it reminds me of that scripture where Jesus says, you now, if you want to make yourself first, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. If you're going to be prominent, I think that's the opposite of what Jesus is pointing at. Mm -hmm. Make yourself the servant of all, I think is the general idea there. In the newspaper record, not only do we have the enterprise record, but if you check the newspapers from the time period, sometimes you get little snippets as well. And they so, were claiming that these were trumpet blasts? Not in the newspaper. Right. And, and, and when did they claim that they were trumpet blasts? That was years later, of course. It wasn't claimed to be a trumpet blast at the time of the convention. But we'll get into that a little later on. Stay tuned. So here, uh, uh, you know, Bible students arrive. 35 states to be represented in Indianapolis. There's one here that says more than 10,000 persons were expected to attend the, the convention there. Another newspaper suggested that there were 9,000 there. Uh, in a lot of the old newspapers, and I, I like how the, you know, when you're doing genealogy research, for example, or ancestry or something like that, and you're looking at a lot of these old newspapers and you're looking up these names, they have all these little quaint comments in, in the older newspapers where it says, you know, Jim Bob Walton, he went to visit his sister Elizabeth at the Walton farm. You'll find a lot of these things in some of these newspapers and all across the country, it says this person went to the Bible student convention in Indianapolis 
or they just returned from that convention in Indianapolis, or they went with their grandchildren or their granddaughter, or they took a motor trip there. All sorts of little personal stories you can get, and you could probably get even more if you followed or, or researched each one of the names there. Here's an overview of how Watchtower is currently looking at these trumpet blasts and which are the conventions they were and what the messages were. And so that first message was a challenge to world leaders. The second one was a warning to all Christians. That's where the sheep and goats doctrine was introduced. If you haven't seen our discussion on the sheep and goats, be sure to check that out. The Ecclesiastics Indicted was the third one. And now we're at the message of hope. And what was that message of hope? And was it really a message of hope or something else? Stay tuned. Or hope for who? <laughs> is, is <it laughs> well, even better. Yeah, that's, Word you know, that. it, it is very, that's a very good question because what might be hope for one might not be hope for another. And the message now is being changed through these new ideas that Rutherford's introducing. So if you wanted to track how Watchtower became what it is today, research these conventions and follow through the new ideas that are being introduced from year to year to year. And you'll notice some interesting patterns. And we've done some of that work for you. You can go and check out, you know, our previous Trumpet Blast discussions. But what was this message of hope? Again, stay tuned. So in the 1950s, in 1955, there was a series of articles that Watchtower did on their history. This is before the Divine Purpose book. So this was their history before the other history. And they mention that this 1925 convention, they mentioned something very interesting here that caught my eye when I read it. This year of great changeover in thinking was highlighted by the General Convention at Indianapolis, Indiana. At the conclusion of J.F. Rutherford's public lecture entitled, A Call to Action, a loving resolution was passed, addressed to all people of goodwill. This was incorporated in a tract called Message of Hope, headed World Reconstruction, a Standard to Guide the Peoples. About 50 million copies were circulated in Christendom as the months passed by. The hands of the witnesses continue to be kept busy during this crucial year of 1925. And I like that they mentioned how many were there at the Memorial Convention in 25. Because what was the result of this message or these new messages that Rutherford was bringing? What happened to those numbers later on? So what you see happening at the end of the 1920s is a big drop in memorial attendance. I mean, from 90,000 to 17,000 in just a couple of years, that's quite drastic. And that's because of a couple of things, really. Uh, one of them being the disfellowshipping that was starting to happen. If you had any difference of opinion, you were on the outs. And if you haven't seen our history of disfellowship discussion, check that out. And also people were leaving because of some of the new ideas that were being brought in. And we're going to have a big discussion uh, in the future, another discussion for another time on where did Rutherford get his ideas from? What were those ideas? Where did they come from? And what were the implications for his near future? And what are the implications for today? Well, if you think about it, it says to all people of goodwill. What do they mean when they say to all people of goodwill? You could only become of goodwill if you join them. Now you're of goodwill. Yeah. Is what more about or more or less when you break it down. <laughs> you're of goodwill if you if you follow us. If not, you're not of goodwill. Yeah. And what happens to those who are not of goodwill? They're goats. Destruction. Goats. They're yeah. judged. Yeah, that, that's the basic idea that, that they've been introducing since the Sheep and Goats convention, since that second convention. And again, we talked about how it went from judgment in the kingdom 
the millennial kingdom to judgment by them personally now here on earth. Quite a responsibility to put yourself in and claim. Uh, so, but at least there's hope for somebody if they listen. <laughs> So the December 1st, 1952 Watchtower says, commenting on this situation, a resolution adopted by Christian ministers and entitled Message of Hope, among other things, had the following to say. World powers, science and philosophy, commerce, and religion claim to be the sunlight of the world, holding forth all the light that shines to enlighten and guide the human race. Intrigue duplicity, and trickery are freely resorted to by the political and commercial powers. Science and philosophy are marked by the vanity and self-sufficiency, while religionists, both Catholic and Protestant, are conspicuous by their arrogance, self-conceit, impiety, and ungodliness. Therefore, it is apparent that the remedies offered by any and all of these aforementioned elements are vain, impotent, and powerless to satisfy man's desires. And look at the article title. It says, Modern Idolatry Foreshadowed. And you could see that logo there, the United Nations. Now, at the time in 1925 when it was written, it would have been the League of Nations that preceded it, but they were making that out to be the beast. Of revelation they're starting to now to move at, at this 1925 convention they're moving to this new interpretation of what what they thought the beast was they re they literally reinvented a new beast if you if you really look we'll get into that later but <laughs> but they literally took what going from clay iron clay down taking revelation all that and create and combine them them into a new beast and, and in a future discussion again another discussion for another time we're going to take a look at the anglo-american powers and where rutherford got this idea from it's going to be a very interesting discussion but but they did take out the the beast that they took they took the Legs of iron mixed with, well, wait, we don't like that. They took the rest. They, they did make, make, oh, let's say I got a horn here. <laughs> Take a, yeah. a, a tail here, a claw here. You know, they made, they made the, a beast you know, to be America in England. <laughs> well, the question again is, why did they do that? And so, uh, you know, in researching that particular question, it was a very interesting research a very interesting conclusion that we came to but again another discussion for another time we promise we'll get there we're working towards that so in the september 1st 1979 watchtower it talks about the modern jeremiah class was prompt and fearless calling world's attention to the clergy's apostasy and they also state that from the november 1st 1925 tower the name of Jehovah was started to be focused on more. Again, why? How does it relate to this trumpet blast? And where are they headed? Stay tuned. We're getting there. It's interesting how they compare Jeremiah talking to the nation of Israel to, to this. Um, it, it's quite, to me, it's quite a jump into it. Uh, and again, when we have the, the name discussion, you know, going jo Jehonadab, Jonadab, how, how you jump from a chariot. Okay, now this is the name. They make types and anti-types and just let it be whatever they decide is a fulfillment that fits the narrative on that. Um, the Jeremiah class, if anything, was talking to their own nation, not an outside entity. They weren't talking to the Canaanites, the Hittites. They were talking to within themselves. So the, that, that alone, prophecy right there, is within, not without, if you can understand what I'm, I'm getting at with this. What was Jeremiah's message primarily directed towards? The nation of Israel. 
Right. And so, if and, and are, what kind if of message? If they are Israel, then who is this message directed to <laughs> or coming from is, is even a better question than that. So it, it you could see how every time they try and change a, a scripture, it affects 10 different other things that they now have to shift a new explanation for. But on the positive note for them, everybody forgets what they said, you know, a few years ago and, and just keeps marching forward. Right. Yeah. It's, and if you have to take every single scripture in the Bible from Old Testament to New Testament and apply it to yourselves after 1914 as a type and antitype, just to support the idea that your organization is the chosen one. What happens when you remove and say, well, we don't want to look at types or antitypes any longer. You want to steer away from that. Where's the but, evidence? But that's of your how you got there in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's very interesting. Um, if anything, if any way they could have uh, used the Jeremiah class preaching within themselves, that should have been their 1918 cleansing of the temple because now they're doing it within. If, if that makes sense with that. Yeah. And, and that's another discussion for another time coming soon. We promise. Sorry, you. folks. There's just too much to talk <laughs> about. We can't get it all at once. We're trying. <laughs> uh, you know, it's important to look at these things. Where did the ideas come from? And sometimes the better question and the most important question, at least for me, is Why? Why was that path taken? Why was that doctrine chosen? Why did they go that route to get where they are today? I used to think that way, Jeff. Why? Now I'm who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more going, who made it go this direction? So, but we're getting there. 